Are you getting ready for the Praxis Early Childhood Education Exam? That's exam code 5025. My name is Jamie Jo, and I'm a certified teacher and Praxis coach with Study.com. In this video, we'll walk through four sample emergent mathematics problems from this exam so that you're confident on test day. Ready? Let's jump in. So something to take note of is that you will not be able to use calculators on this portion of the test. So you will want to use the pencil and paper that you are given to work through problems. Problem one, what is the next value in the pattern? One, negative three, nine, negative 27, and so forth. So we need to figure out what's gonna come after that negative 27 here in the pattern. The first thing that I notice is that negative three, nine, and negative 27, they all have a factor of three. So three can be divided into each of them and you'll get a nice whole number. For example, negative three divided by three is negative one, or nine divided by three gives you three. So based on that observation, I believe that three or maybe negative three is going to be part of our solution here. So let me clear this out for us. And while I do that, let's think about how we can get from that first step in the pattern to the second step. So from one to negative three, that jump there. One, maybe times something or plus something is going to give us negative three. Well, based on that observation we talked about, let's try three. One times three. Does that give us a negative three? No, that does not work because that would be three. A positive times a positive is going to give us a positive number, not a negative number. So let's try one times negative three. Yes, that gives us what we want, negative three. So let's keep that pattern going and see if it works for the rest. From negative three, to nine. So negative three times negative three equals, yes, nine. That works because a negative times a negative equals a positive. Now from nine to negative 27. Nine times negative three equals negative 27. It's continuing to work so we know we are on the right track negative 27 times negative 3 is going to give us positive 81. Let's see if that's one of our choices. Yes, C is 81, so that is our answer. Problem 2. Which of the following describes the ability of a student to understand that the total items in a set do not change based on which items are counted first? Now a great thing to do with problems like this is just to quickly read through the options they give you to see what sounds familiar or not. So A, functionality, you see the root word function and that makes me think of something working or not working. B, cardinality, see that root word cardinal, that makes me think of a cardinal number since we're dealing with counting here in this problem. And I have heard that term in a math class before, so that might be a possibility. C, rationality. That root word rational makes me think of reasoning or if something is reasonable. And then logicality. I see the root word logical. And that just makes me think of if something makes sense or not. So comparing C and D, those are really similar. And since this is looking for one right answer, those I'm going to just say those are not the right answer because with process of elimination, those are so similar that I'm going to rule those out and leave myself with A or B as my answer options. So functionality or cardinality. Since I remember this um, being mentioned in a math class with cardinality and cardinal numbers, and we're talking about counting and students understanding counting. I'm going to revisit that. And cardinal numbers, I remember, 
tell how many of something is in a set or they show quantity. So let's draw a little picture for ourselves to test this out. So if we have four triangles and a student needs to count them, we typically might encourage them to count from left to right, you know, one, two, three, and four. But we might just give them all the triangles in a big group and say, how many triangles do you have? And they would count then maybe one, two, three, four. Well, they understand cardinality in the sense that no matter what triangle they start with, they're going to end up with the same amount of four. And that makes sense, so my answer is B. Problem three. A kindergarten teacher is working on building her students' ability to group objects by one or more attributes. Which of the following manipulatives would be the most beneficial to use during this lesson? Let's go through each option and think about the attributes that a student could sort them by. A. Counting bears. Usually counting bears are a variety of colors, so students could sort them by color, but they do look identical, so that would be the main way they could sort them. B, pattern blocks. Those are also different colors, so they could sort them by color. They're different shapes. They could be sorted by shape. And shapes have a varying amount of sides, so that could be another way the students could sort them. C, dominoes. Dominoes have a variety of numbers on each side of them. A student could add them up and sort them by odd versus even numbers. But this is a kindergarten classroom, so I would say that that wouldn't be a great option for this age group. So that's one way you could sort them, but I'm going to eliminate that option just for appropriateness for the age level. The last one, dice. Dice are all identical, it's the same shape, they have the same numbers on the same sides. So that is not something that would be a great sorting tool. So for the majority of options, B pattern blocks has the most and best options for this age group. Problem four, which of the following answer choices is the best example of a lifelong skill that begins at the foundational level of sequencing. Let's look at the first one, identifying right angles on a chart. Sure, that is something you should be able to do, but that's not typically something you do on a day-to-day -day basis, so I would not consider that a lifelong skill. So I'm just gonna eliminate that as a great option choice. The next one, counting from negative 10 to positive 10. Sure, that is something that I might do more often than identifying a right angle on a chart. And it, it does have to do with counting, so that has to do with the order of things and sequencing. So this might be a viable answer choice. We'll leave that as an option. The next one, understanding place value and counting money. Just as a review, place value is the value of a digit according to its position in a number. So in that sense, we're dealing with position and order that has to do with sequencing. So it meets that requirement. And then counting money, that is absolutely something you deal with on a day-to-day -day basis with transactions at a store or a restaurant or anywhere. It's a lifelong skill. You need to understand money and how to exchange it and how it works. So I would say that meets that lifelong skill requirement as well. So that might be our best option choice, let's see. And the last one, reading word problems involving a menu. Sure, you might go to a restaurant often and you need to be able to read a menu and it should be something involved in problems for students just for that real life practice. But that's not something that has to do with sequencing or the foundation of sequencing. So that would not be the best example here. So between the second and third option, the third option of understanding place value and counting money meets both requirements best.
because the question asked for just the best option. So we are going to go with that one. I hope this was helpful. If you're looking for more ways to study, then check out our other videos and also make your way over to study.com to check out our Praxis test prep courses. As a study.com member, you'll get full access to hundreds of practice problems like the ones I just walked you through, plus targeted instruction for any topics that you are still struggling with, as well as test strategies to help you maximize your score on test day. Finally, we want to hear from you. Please like and subscribe if today's video was helpful, and then let us know down below in the comments if there are any specific topics that you want us to cover next. Good luck and happy studying.